Hey, everybody, it's Pat Jones, and I'm here with another Turf Zoom from our friends at Aquatrols. Today is kind of special because we're talking to our friend, Kristen Wachowski. Kristen, how are you? I am doing well, Pat. How are you? I'm just fine. Kristen uh, is, is a, uh, a leader in sales and management at uh, Pendleton Turf Supply up in southern Wisconsin, northern Illinois area. Is that right, Kristen? Yes, that is correct. Out of uh, Waterford, which is just by Burlington. Tell me about Pendleton, because Pendleton, I think, is one of those old school, independent family run distributors that uh, folks like me like a lot. Tell me about your company. Yes, that is correct. Uh, Pendleton was started by my father just over 30 years ago. Uh, He started with a building and he went out and did some sales. He had my grandfather actually join him and my grandfather did all of his deliveries. And then my mother actually joined as well. And she helped with all of the office secretarial work. Um, Fast forward a few years, he started hiring some sales reps to take the load off him and expand a little bit. And then hired delivery driver and fast forward some more years. Uh, I got into the business as well, graduated from Madison with my turf degree. And uh, we're trying to expand just a little bit more here and there. Was there ever any doubt in your mind you wanted to do this, uh, that, that you wanted to, to get into this crazy business? Oh, yes. Yeah. So I actually started going to school with a biology degree, hoping to go into the medical field. And uh, after my first medical seminar, I decided that was most definitely not for me. Yeah. I tried dietetics, too. So went to like nutrition. I wanted to go into like sports nutrition, create meal plans for, you know, pro athletes. Turns out you have to practice what you preach. Uh, <laughs> and I love pizza and mac and cheese and chips. <laughs> and yeah, you can't do that. <laughs> well, but um, instead, you're creating meal plans for golf courses now. Like you think about it that right. way. <laughs> yep, exactly. And that's when uh, my roommate actually told me, hey, your dad has a company that he always wanted to make into a family business. Yeah. At the time, neither my brother nor my sister were, were going to school um, for the business. They actually had different... Um, plans for school. And so I was the last one and said, all right, let's do this. So I called him up, asked him what I had to do. I called up uh, Doug Soldat, who yep. was, you know, now going to be my advisor for the soil science degree, turf industry um, for that area. He set me up with a little project. We were doing uh, a project at Monona golf course for the first tee kids. And uh, turns out I actually loved doing some hard work there. And ever since then, I finished my finished my degree in soil science with a specialization in turf management yep. and uh, started working for my dad the minute I graduated. Amazing. And, and so, and how, how many folks work with you today? How many salespeople do you have at Pendleton? It's just myself and one other, uh, one other sales rep. Wow. So it's truly a family, a, a small family business. That's great. So as you've, as you've gone out and gotten experience, you've been able to rely on some time you spent at Racing Country Club, um, you know, doing doing what you got to do to learn to be a turf head. Uh, what was that experience like? Yes, that was a lot of fun, actually. Um, the first thing my dad said to me was, if you want to be in this industry, especially on the sales side, you have to figure out what superintendents and grounds crew um, workers do yep. in order to actually understand what goes on on that side. So he actually recommended Racine uh, at the time. Mike Hendrick was the Mike Hendricks was the superintendent, mm-hmm. and he was a good friend of my dad's. And they had an assistant who was also a female. So my dad thought, hey, you know, there's not a whole lot of females in this industry, and so let's put you out of course. There were, there's a female, so you do feel a little bit more comfortable. Sure enough, I barely spent any time with with the female there. I ended up hanging out with all of the uh, male <laughs> crew members anyway. But I had a blast. Um, I never mowed anything in my life, not even, you know, our home lawn. My dad was very particular about how it got mowed, when it got mowed. (laughs) So I didn't touch any of that. Um, So he let you learn learn at Racing Country Club on a triplex. Is that what you're saying? (laughs) I uh, double cut greens, walk mowing, Um, walk mowed for uh, tees as well. And then I went on a sidewinder and those were three of the main jobs, but I also filled, I mean, actually my first day at, at Racine, 
I filled divots for about six hours and I got home and I looked at my dad and I was like, what am I doing here? Why <laughs> am I filling divots? What am I, why am I putting dirt and seed in a little hole in the fairway? Right. And my dad's like, just give it a chance. So day number two, what am I doing again? Fill in divots for another six hours. <laughs> and that's then I finally got to learn how to mow. And I, it turns out I absolutely loved being on the course. I loved being outside. Um, yeah, there's some hard work here and there. And, you know, sometimes it stinks, but I enjoy getting up early. I enjoy being done with work early. Um, even, you know, working Saturdays and Sundays, if I had to work a weekend, I start at four, maybe 5 a.m., but I'm done by nine. So by right. the time I get home and showered, all my friends are just getting up from, you know, sleeping. So <laughs> I already made some money that day and I still had the entire weekend to, you know, after that to do whatever I wanted. So, so, you know, in a lot of ways, that's very old school and you've learned the right way and you came up, but you brought some new things to the table. Uh, for example, I think you do a terrific job with using YouTube as an educational uh, 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 platform for your customers. Tell us a little bit about what you've done in the, in the, by using YouTube. Yeah, so sometimes it's tough seeing every single customer and being able to meet with them the exact, you know, day that you have scheduled, there's things that pop up in the middle of the season. And so whenever a new product came out, yeah, you can send out an, just a basic email that says, hey, here's a new product. But you can't really show the details or explain certain bits and pieces. You know, I could send you a label that shows the rate, but mm -hmm. the rate could be anywhere from one ounce to six ounces. Well, that's, you know, pretty large range when you're talking about products to put on a green or a fairway. And so by making these videos, it was a way for customers to still see my face, um, still feel like they're kind of interacting with me, but I could kind of tell all the little tips and, and little tricks to some of these products that right. you can't quite get the point across in an email. That's exactly, that, that's exactly right. So then you distribute them by email out to your, to your group or, or, you know, just share them directly with particular customers that you think might need them. What's the, what's the response been? Because there's not a lot of people doing something like this. And I think it's a terrific idea. Have you had good response from people? Yeah, I've had great response. Um, I need to make more videos. That's for sure. And I need to uh, get more of the superintendents to actually um, subscribe to my YouTube channel. That way, when I do post a new video, they get notified versus me having to sit there and email every time I put out a new, a new right. video. Um, right. A lot of times I'll mention something to a superintendent when I see them, or I'll try to, I've got a QR code that has my YouTube channel on it. So if I am talking about a new product, I might put that QR code on a little sell sheet when I give the superintendent, when I see them. So if they want to see or hear more information on it, they can, you know, scan the code or at least go to my YouTube channel right. and try to get more information on it. Well, hopefully this will get a few people to sign up because I know I'm going to yeah. sign up. So, so your dad before you has been selling Aquatrol's products for a quarter of a century, and, and you know has yeah. been has been part of the, the Aquatrol's family. And so, as you've come on board, though, you were kind of just in time for the birth of, of Zipline, and, and you, you've been able to kind of see that product uh, uh, from start. Um, what's been the response to Zipline among your customers up there in the, in the Great Lakes? So far, um, I'd probably say about 99% of my customers who have tried it have stuck with it. Okay. Um, <laughs> and, and the only reason there's that 1% who haven't, it's because they're still trying to figure out when, where, how to apply it, or it could possibly be budgetary reasons. Um, right. Obviously budgets get tight here and there if they want to, you know, increase their labor budget, they have to cut back on chemical budget. And right. sometimes wedding agents seem to be the first that go um, compared to, you know, fungicides or herbicides, unfortunately. But I will say, you know, anyone who has used Zipline and can continue to use it is going to stay with it because it does work so well. What's the feedback you get from them? What's the value they get from Zipline on their golf courses? Uh, I will say they are most impressed with the firmness that they get from it. Um, mm -hmm. Plus they enjoy that, you know, if there is a rain, there is that penetrant in there that kind of helps push it through um, while also having, you know, a holder in there. So mm -hmm. when it, it is dry, they still have water available for, 
you know, their plants to still thrive. Right. And, and, and nobody has all the labor in, in the world these days. And you do hear consistently, I don't have to hand water as much. It's such a huge thing. Yes. Um, and another huge benefit of Zipline is that you will see dew suppression. Right. So not only do you not have to have, you know, certain guys go out and actually do whip, but you can also kind of extend your, let's say your dollar spot application. So you can kind of cut back on certain fungicides because you are getting this dew suppression for, you know, three, four days. Right. Every little bit helps. Do, do you preach the, the value of using uh, uh, wetting agents in the tank with fungicides and PGRs and things too? I, I think that that sometimes gets forgotten when budgets are tight or whatever else, but it seems to help. Yes. Um, there, there are very few products out right now that you cannot tank mix with. And right. so a lot of the times, if guys are going out with a fairway spray, I tell them, even if you can't do you know, a full app of something, just put partial app in. If you know you're going to be spraying your, you know, greens every two weeks, go at the every two week rate or, you know, go at the monthly rate and just skip every, you know, every, basically every other two weeks um, to stick with that monthly rate because that, it makes a huge difference. You don't, I mean, you don't have to go with the second app where, you know, there are, there are actually other wedding agents on the market that you do have to right. do a completely right. separate app. And that's extremely time consuming. Um, a lot of, you know, a lot of courses don't have the ability to have a spray tech who can just do all the spraying. So usually it's going to be the assistant or the superintendent himself who are doing the sprays. And so if you can cut back on one spray because you can mix it and put it all in one tank, that makes, you know, all the difference. Yes, it does. The the other thing that's relatively new to your business is is Redox that, that you were, were, you know, learning about and, and bringing it on board here for the last several years since it became part of the, the, the family, so to speak. What's been a response to, to, to Redox up there? We've had really great success with it. Um, at first, guys kind of look at it and like, oh, okay, it's another, you know, nutritional program. But then yeah. when you start pulling out one or two products at a time, instead of just giving them the entire product line, it's, it's been extremely successful. Um, when you talk about, I'm going to just put the two together, but Penicale and Calcium, mm -hmm. the soils here are so tight that just using that at low rates, I mean, I'm talking Penicale at a quart per acre, um, the low costs, just just little spoon feeding it and it that makes a difference just putting in you know an ounce per thousand of calcium in the tank with it it makes a huge difference in the soil structure which then in turn helps with the way products are moved throughout the soil profile how the water is distributed um it's and like i said it's it's nine day difference and those are products that you do see you know instant gratification from and so starting hmm. off with something like that is is magnificent and then the guys see that and then okay now they're interested in other products right um another huge product that i absolutely love to kind of push and, and sell is oxycal yeah. although it's a little difficult right off the back because you can't just throw it in your tank because of all the uh basically the oxidation that happens and kind of the foaming of it um when guys do use it whether it's for mid-season stress or doing it before or after airification um, hitting spots that they're just struggling with that that's one of those products that, you know, guys really do see a difference with instantly. And once they can trust one product, you know, they're more open to other products and there hasn't been one product that Redox has that we haven't had success with. So. Right. And, and, great, yeah. and the other thing that you've got is scientific literature and support to, 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 to prove what's being said. And that, that, I think that's so mm -hmm. important that, that, that's part of your approach is saying, this is not just me making this up. Here's the science behind this because it's backed by a company like Aquatrols. That's really cool. Yes. So, so I'll, I'll, you mentioned it earlier, I'll point out the obvious. You're a, a woman in a man's world and it's still, it's still a, a relative rarity to find uh, women in, in the sales side of our business. There's some, there's some that have been very, very successful. But you know, I think you've jumped into this as 
not as a woman, but as a family member who's just uh, th that this feels like the right thing to do and you're passionate about it. Tell, tell us a little bit about how that feels and what you've, what you've learned from the process over the last few years. Yeah. So I don't know, every time I go into a sales meeting, I just think about it as hanging out with a friend. Um, so when I go in, I, I don't think of it as like, okay, I'm a female going into like a man's office. It's like, all right, I'm going to, you know, my friend X, Y, and Z, and we're just going to have a conversation. And I'm very passionate about sports as well. So it's easy for me to communicate and start with, oh, so are you a Bears fan? Well, I don't know if we can really be friends because I hate <laughs> the Bears or, you know, and so I always try to start it off as, you know, it's a friendship. If I don't get, you know, an order the day I meet this guy or, you know, any the superintendent in general, I, I don't get down on myself because okay. I'm not, not that I'm not there to make a sale, but once again, I'm, I'm more so there to be a help. I want to be your friend. I want to make sure that if there's something you need, I can get it to you. I can get to you when you need it, to, you know, need it there. Um, and I think that's one of the struggles sometimes is that a lot of things are focused of like, okay, it's a girl coming into a guy's office or it's a girl doing this. And I don't, I don't really think of myself as like a girl. I just think of myself as another person in the golf industry. You're a turf head. That's all that matters. Yeah. So, yeah, exactly. So, yeah. So final thought. So you're very likely, I hope, I really, really hope that independent dis distribution stays forever and that we always have companies like yours and people like you in this industry, but you're very likely to be doing this for uh, decades past my, my expiration date and, and a few others. What's your hope for the future? What do you, what do you hope that we can see that will make the golf market even better in the future? Yeah. Um, being a definitely a, a smaller family ran business, um, we do provide more of a, you know, one-on-one -on -one family connection with, you know, golf courses and superintendents. And I hope that's still an importance to golf courses and superintendents in the future. Um, I will say, I know there's some really big chemical companies out there that can provide, you know, 10 cents cheaper on a product um, than maybe we can, for example. But with that being said, all their profits are going to, you know, the head honcho and, you know, maybe their sales reps are only making, you know, the bare minimum where we get it distributed. And then, you know, we also like to give back uh, to the community and, you know, into the golf industry. It's not, you know, we don't have to pay 17 layers of management yep. and then maybe, you know, donate a hundred dollars here. Right. Most of our money, you know, you know, profits go back into into the industry and, you know, going back to my YouTube channel, I try to do that as well. So the, we one, for example, is, is a big, um, a big organization in the, in the golf industry. And so every so often, if I do a YouTube video and I've got a, we one hat on, or we one shirt on any, um, purchases that are mentioned, um, for, let's say the month of January, anything that is parade. I'll say, you know, 10% of our par parade profits will then go towards the We One Foundation. Um, and it just means a little bit something more to us being a smaller family run company than, you know, some of these bigger companies. And so I hope that in the future, you know, all of these smaller companies do succeed and continue to succeed. I hope we never lose that. And as uh, somebody who knew Wayne Otto quite well, I'm delighted that you're doing that, that that makes that fog me up a little bit. I'm so glad that, that that that's happening. And that's another reason why independent distributors like Pendleton should always be a part of this market. Kristen, thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate you being a guest here on yeah. Turf Zoom. Thank you for having me. You're welcome. And we, we, we hope to see you again soon. And we hope to see all of you again soon because we'll be doing another edition of Turf Zoom before you know it. Stay tuned. <laughs>